Hey, welcome or welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. Today is going to be an in-depth look at how I edit my photos for Shutterstock or pretty much just how I edit my photos in general. I'm going to show you step by step how I do it in Photoshop, although the editing can be done pretty much in any editing software because it's just basic settings that you're going to be changing. I'm going to go ahead and just put you on the computer and talk you through it. If you haven't watched any of my other Shutterstock videos, I'll link the first one up here and let's go ahead and get started. Okay, this is the photo I'm going to use today as my example of my editing workflow. It's just a simple photo from Iceland, not the greatest, but it'll work. The first thing I do, or sometimes I do it at the end, it doesn't really matter, is crop it if needed or straighten it. This photo could be straightened a little bit. To do that, you go to the crop option over here on the side, and then you can hit straighten up above, and then just zoom in on a line that should be straight, like for instance this road back here, and then you'll just draw a line where it should be straight, and then it'll automatically straighten it. And then, there you go. This one didn't really need to be straightened all that much, or probably really at all, but I just wanted to show that as an example. And then the real editing starts. And this is really easy. Like I said, anyone should be able to do this. If you go up to filter and go to camera raw filter or the shortcut is shift control A, go into that. And it doesn't matter if your photo is in raw or JPEG, it doesn't matter. Then go over here on the side and there's a ton of different options for settings that you can change. You can also do the white balance if you need to. Down here is where I will show you what I do. I do this pretty much for most photos with slight changes depending on the individual photo. So for contrast, I'm going to do plus 75 highlights, negative 75 shadows, 75, and then whites and blacks you can change if you need to depending on the individual photo. And then texture, if it's a landscape like this, I might do like plus 5 for texture, but otherwise leave it alone. Clarity, I usually do about 10. Dehaze, you can do if you need it. Vibrance, I use 10. Saturation, I don't usually mess with unless it maybe needs just a little bit, and then maybe I'll do like 5. Um, and then that is it. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK, and you can see there the difference. It's not a huge difference, but it is a pretty dramatic change from the original to the edited. And I didn't say this, but really with stock photos, they should be edited naturally. It should look pretty much like it did in person. You don't want to make it black and white or oversaturate it or edit it in some way where it doesn't look as it does in real life because that's the whole point is to represent the location correctly in your stock photos. That is pretty much it. Then I'm going to go up here again to filters, go to sharpen and sharpen the image. This helps if it is maybe slightly out of focus or anything just to sharpen it up, especially since having photos not be sharp or out of focus is a common reason for rejection. So if you sharpen it a little bit ahead of time, that might reduce the amount of times you get rejections. There you go. There's also some people back here. You can maybe edit those people out if you wanted to. I have a whole other video about editing people out of photos and I'll put the link up here in the corner for you and you can watch that. I'll go ahead and give you a quick little side-by-side -side comparison. Thank you for watching this and go ahead and like, subscribe. I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye!